Hi everyone. Now, recently I did a video on a bug pattern in which I, I used a metallic type thread. Uh, and one it was a Madeira thread I used. It was a pink Madeira thread. It was a metallic thread, uh, basically a bit of flash with a, a core of thread, which obviously protects the thread itself. Uh, makes it more obviously usable. Uh, and I spoke about another thread called Microglint. This one, I'll just take it off. This Microglint from Veneers. This is the, the yellow. Now, uh, basically the question was what patterns did the tie use in it? And there was lots of patterns of tied, lots and lots. Now I can show you the one of the first flies I tied using the, the in this case, this was the pearl version. Uh, this was a, just a, a pheasant tail nymph tied. Same way I would tie the using the copper wire, but in this case I was using the, the pearl uh, metallic thread. Uh, great buzzer. Caught lots of fish over the years when I worked in the fishery with these. And uh, that was probably one of the main ones. There was a copper version that I tied as well, with a copper metallic thread. Uh, but what I did tie was uh, hedgehogs, patterns like this. This is one here tied using the, this is a kind of black, the rainbow as you call it, and I'll show you the number. There are kind of different numbers. This is the colour number 270, so it's metallic threads. Uh, the other one I tied, and this was a, that, that was a good one, that fished really well. The other one was the, the, the yellow version. This was great, this worked on, I would probably say that worked better in a way, but it depends on the day, like uh, you catch easily in both. Now these were basically pulling fl flies rather than, uh, like I would normally fish a, a hedgehog pattern like a dry fly mainly, but when you're pulling, you put two or three of these on and you're pushing, pulling them through a wave and uh, one of the bigger locks, that they can work it extremely well. And this yellow bodied version, it was uh, I used a micro glint, this, this one here, uh, which is basically a kind of pearly yellow colour. Now I'm going to tie it, let me tie the fly. Now, hook choice can be, if you want it more on the top, you use a medium sort of light wire hook, but if you're pulling it through, I like, uh, I like to use a heavier hook. Uh, in this case, this was a full and mill. This is one of, I used the bronze version as well as the black nickel. Uh, the black nickel's a good hook. Uh, but anyway, this is a size 12. Now, you can wax this if you need to control it a wee bit. The wax just fell off there, so I'm putting the wax back on. But the best to actually put it on first before you wax it. So I would start about head length away from the eye, catch it on, trim away the waist, and then I'd run the wax through to make sure I had plenty of grip. And then I'd wind down to in line with the point of the hook, or the barb of the hook, sorry. And uh, the deer hair I'm using, this is just raw deer. It's just the, this is the darker fibre, it's normally you find the, the, if you look through the patches, just look for a one with the, the darker or more coloured fibre, which is normally where it runs along the back of the, the deer. But anyway, again, depending on how heavy you want it, you can remove the, the fur to suit. I'm kind of subsurface type, so I'm not going to go overboard. But I'm going to stack it. So into a stacker. Tips first. Tap on your desk. And you lined up. Yep. Then you remove it from the stacker. Now lengthwise, it's around about the body length, just over the back. So I would hold that and I'm going to trim this to basically in line with the point of the hook. So if you imagine there, so you might trim that so it runs to the middle of the hook of the shank. Drop my wax. Anyway, we'll another piece there. You catch this on there, it's just a kind of light turn. Now I'm keeping a hold of the, the deer hair on top and quickly taking the thread up. And then I'm going to work my way back through. It's just basically to catch it on nice and tight and keeping the deer hair on top. And then tidy things come back up. See what it's like. That's fine. I'm going to repeat this. So a bit more deer here. 
Turn away, take away the underfur, and then the broken ends. Now wax your thread again. And then we tie in the middle part of the wing. And we're basically going to do the same. But this time, I'm just going to have the black tips. You could measure it exactly the same. There's the length, and then just move up and tie it on, because that will give you the distance. So use that as a guide. So there's my length. Slide it up, because we're going to tie it in there. So that will make it slightly tapered. We hold that, and again, I'm going to trim it to this point here, just a bit shorter the head length away. This is just to balance and build up the fly. So there's the length. So we come over and then we just, I usually just pinch the cut ends of the deer here and take the thread up. And then I come back down, keeping hold of the wing, keeping it on top. You will get the odd loose turn there, but you can tidy this up and tighten up onto it as you come back. See what it's like. we one hair that's coming round here, but we can take it away. We need to. Not that the fish would notice, I'm just bringing it back up. And you can see that's sitting fine. Now you could put a lot more on if you want. It's up to yourself. Now I'm actually going to put the legs on. Now you can put natural, this is a pre knotted pheasant tail legs. You could put natural dyed on. I've used a few different colours. Orange is good, so I'm going to use the orange. Now if you bring the fibres 90 degrees from the, the stem of the feather, the tips will naturally line up. What I'm doing here is I'm separating three, using my finger thumb to hold them apart, tear them away, and then what I'm going to do is use the shank to separate them in the body. Now you're looking for a length, I'm just checking these are the right length they are. So you want to see them towards the end of the, at the back, and then being orange you'll certainly see them okay. So I come over with a couple of turns. Just basically to see they're okay, and then another one here just to make sure they're going to move. You can trim them away. Okay, I'm going to wax my thread, just tidy this bit, tidy that up, and then go back to our deer hair. Trim it close to the skin, just open up the fibres, remove. That under fur, as I say, if you remove the under fur, it stacks far easier. Tips first into the stacker. Tap on your desk. There we are. Again, we can use the guide just to measure. There's the length of the. It's the same length, but just obviously further up makes it further away, and gives you the taper. So there's my length, we hold that. Yeah, I mean, you could trim this like an elk hair caddis and leave some of the deer hair hanging over. But I'm just going to basically tie it on, catch it on the top. Nice and tight. Make sure it's sitting first. Nice taper. I can then take my thread to the front. And then build the thread up into the cut ends. So I'm just taking the thread up. Once I'm happy with that, I can come then, put finish coming through, again tidying things as I go, and then put finish. And there we go. And that's the sedgehog, or hedgehog, sorry, whatever way you want to call it. It's more hedgehog like this. The sedgehog usually uh, would be classed with the one with the hackle in front. That's how it was. So I used to separate the names anyway, but this is the hedgehog, and then just varnish the head. Great fly, what's a treat? And there we go. That's untied with that. As I say, you can you can really tie many flies. I've tied tied dial backs, I've obviously tied buzzers, I've tied even crunchers, I've tied a number of flies, well known patterns that we fish. Um, just making sure my legs are sitting. Once you start to fish this fly, it will sit nice. So anyway, there we are. That's uh, the micro glint version uh, of the 
the hedgehog, just a natural one with the yellow. It does show up really well in fish as well. So anyway, thanks for watching. Until next time.